So today, uh, let's break down the arrangement that I did for Brahms Lullaby. So if you're just looking at the notes on the page, uh, it's not a very hard arrangement. Um, the melody is slow, the whole piece is slow, the melody isn't particularly complex. Um, the left hand is in quarter notes the entire time, so you're not doing crazy rhythms or syncopations. Um, and for an intermediate level, there are also some interesting challenges. You can really focus on your phrasing and uh, your finger choice as you move through this, which uh, I believe is a very important part of playing the stick. So let's take a look at the left hand first, and we'll take it in four bar chunks. So the left hand is entirely arpeggiated all the way through, and it's constantly, you know, this quarter note pulse. One, two, three, one, two, three. We're going to be using that as our metronome. It starts out on a C major. Um, and that lasts for three bars, and the first two bars we do this power chord shape. Just like that. You've got the root, the fifth, and the octave, and that happens twice. Then we're going to switch to the basic major shape, and then move the whole thing up to a D minor. Basic minor shape. That's the first four bars. So the right hand starts with E twice. And right off the bat, this is where, you know, the intermediate challenge could come in. Um, and what I was talking about with finger choice. With an instrument like guitar, or bass, or a uh, violin or something, where you, you're only focusing on playing strings with, uh, or fretting strings, or pressing down strings with one hand, um, you get the luxury of having your fretting hand uh, be what you're playing, and your other hand be how you're playing it, or how you're expressing it, right? Um, with Guitar, you can choose to do legato things or staccato things, or you can do pinch harmonics or something like that. Um, you know, all of these involve the way you pluck the string. With the stick, both hands are, uh, if you're playing more than one part, both hands are what and how you're playing it. Uh, and so, if you want to make phrasing choices on the instrument, you need to be very conscious of how your uh, the order in which you pick your fingers and how your fingers and that order, how your order of your fingers navigates uh, through your phrase. So the left hand starts on the same note, E, twice, right? And then goes up to G. Well, if you want to take away some of that staccato nature of playing the same note twice, pick two fingers that you can just pluck the same note with. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of these double notes uh, in this piece that you know you kind of have to think through um, because you need to both set yourself up to play both of those notes smoothly, but then also you need to land on a finger that allows the next note to be played smoothly. And so on this first E, I start on my second finger and then go to my third finger and then up to the G with my first. And I repeat that. And then with my pinky, I'm playing the E now. Pinky, first finger, second finger, because now I just have this pull off to the B right there. And then when I get down to that A, I land on my pinky, and then I double tap. I call these double taps um, down to uh, to my third finger, which allows me to pull off on my first finger on the G. Watch again. Two, three, one. Two, three, one. Four, one, two, one, four, three, one. Of course, those are the finger numbers. So when you combine this, and you combine, you know, a good uh, sustain technique in your left hand, and as a reminder, the basis of sustain technique is not letting any of the notes up for as long as you can, basically. Instead of going... Right, I'm holding each of those down until that note happens again. Okay, so the next four bars, uh, we start on the D minor chord again for two. Then we go to the first inversion, G major. So B on the bottom, G, and then D for one bar, and then back to the C major. Open uh, the basic C major chord. G on our first finger, and we're now on beat three of bar four, 
And this is the beginning of, a, of another phrase, so now it would be appropriate, if you were to choose to, to hop with your first finger. And that was the choice that I made. Although, if you don't want to do that, that's fine too. Uh, you could either land on uh, your second finger and drop down to your first, or you could do land on your first finger on G and drop down with your second finger. Like that. And I've chosen to land on my first finger on that D. And I do my third finger. And I wind up on my pinky on the F. And then I use my second finger to go back to the D so that I can double tap it to uh, reset the phrase. So that's the first half of the phrase. Uh, and then we're going to take, you know, when it goes... That's going to be our uh, first finger on the, on the D, fourth finger on the F. First finger, it's a little bit of a reach, uh, but you just reach back a single fret and two strings up to get the B. And then fourth finger will just naturally fall on the A to the second finger on the G. And then one on the uh, B and two on the C. Now we're coming into the third four bar phrase. Uh, bar 12, and we had finished our left hand on a C major chord, right? An open C major shape, or the basic C major shape. We're now going to jump up to the second inversion F major shape. And that's going to be your first finger on C, third finger on A, and fourth finger on F. And it looks a lot like this shape, because it is that shape, just, you know, done in the fifth shape. That's going to be arpeggiated, and then go back to the C, so... G major shape in first inversion. Back to C. And in our right hand, we've got our first finger on C here, and I reach over to an octave down, and I double tap from my third finger to my fourth finger, so that I still have that nice reach back up to the octave there. And then from that octave, I just do an F major arpeggio down, first finger on C, third finger on A, fourth finger on F, wind up on G with my first finger, and then I do the exact same shape, just one string set down. G with my first finger, uh, E with my third finger, and F, sorry, C with my fourth finger. Once I hit that C, I sneak my third finger over to hit the F one string above it, First finger on G, then third finger on uh, A there, and then I do all in eighth notes, D with my first finger, E with my third finger, and G with my first finger again. So this whole phrase is going to look like this. Three, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, three, one, three, one, three, one. Then the final four bars. Uh, you start back on the F, it's almost identical. Start back on the F in first inversion, or second inversion rather, to the C. And now you're going to walk A, G, F, E. And then I usually end with C on the bottom there. So all together. Transferring from that uh, C to the little walk down A, uh, G, F, E, um, I usually, you know, since I'll wind up doing fingers one, two, and four here, that leaves my third finger to kind of sneak in and hit that A. In the right hand, it starts pretty much the same as well. Three and four to double tap the low C. One on the higher C, then F major arpeggio down, three, four, and then G on the, with the first finger again, and then C major arpeggio down, finger three and four, and then all the way up to this point is still the same. Uh, I'm going to be using finger three on that F, the one string above, and then finger two on the E, one on the D, and then finally four on the C there. You can kind of slow it down, and when I hit that low C, just to kind of give it a, a bit sweeter of a tone rather than the harshness of the tap, 
I'll just thumb pluck it. Um, that's pretty much the song. So, you know, as a beginner, if you take a look at this, uh, it's just learn the notes. Learn the notes as best you can and see how well you can put it together and try and get through, you know, this is like right on par with the uh, Ode to Joy theme that I did. It's, it's really great if you're in your like first six months to a year of stick playing and you're just like looking for things to put together. Um, once you get past just being able to put it together though, then you can start thinking about this phrasing stuff and that adds more of an intermediate challenge to it. So that's pretty much it. Uh, good luck with it. Let me know what you got. I'd love to hear a version of it. Uh, yeah, cool. Keep exploring.